What's going on, everybody? So today we have one of the most exciting summit events in the game, to be honest. Uh, we've had a few ones like the Epic Raid Up, which I actually think is a pretty good one. The 10 X's, which I think are pretty mediocre in general. Um, and now we've had, which is active right now, a pity reduction system. Now, oh my goodness, this is totally bug. I'm gonna have to restart my game. Um, be right back. <laughs> So we're back and we have to go back and talk about this pity changes. I also want to talk about the account where we're going and we're going to summon a little bit here. Um, and I also want to talk about this compared to some of the other summon events. So first off, we are in the excellent wishes. You'll see um, it has this 146 minus 30 here. And then if you see, it says 116. So this is the actual total amount right here that you need to go ahead and summon for your legendary. Over here on the right hand side, um, it'll say required drawing attempts before guaranteed legend legendary hero minus 30. So technically my pity right now is 146 six minus 30 it takes off 30 um from the pity which is 20 percent. so it's basically 20 percent more legendaries um if you kind of want to look at it that way supreme wish same thing um you're gonna have the minus three attempts and so what this is really good for is situations like where i'm at in the supreme wish i'm at five minus three that puts me at two which means that these supreme wishes are so much more valuable but actually in general these are the best events that we've had so far in the game Right? If we talk about the epic rate up, yes, epics are sold. Yes, that's more food. Yes, you get 8%, I believe it was, more epics. Um, and that's great, right? You're gonna get more food and that's better typically than the 10X rates. This one, however, is 20% more legendaries, as I mentioned, um, assuming you're going to full pity, which most people do on that later pity, um, which means that this is arguably one of the best events for summoning in the game because we don't have two X's. We don't have these insane summoning events. We don't have um, like crazy banners. We have this base banner, 10 X's, um, and that's pretty much it. That's all we really get in this game. And so you guys have to really consider, yes, this may not be good compared to a lot of other games you might have seen, but it is one of the best banners that we've ever gotten in this game. And I definitely recommend that you guys summon, especially if you're close to the pity. If you're at 116 like myself, you might want to skip out because if we look here in the event tab, um, we don't have a wish event, which is one of the reasons why I basically advocate for people summoning. When you go ahead and see, let's just see here, Miracle Wish, we have like a Miracle Wish goals, um, which gives you bonus rewards. And the same thing with 10X rates. Usually 10X rates pair with a wish event and you're going to get free resources. So. You have to decide is your free resources like eggs energy multi battles potions worth more and sometimes um the uh the legendary scrolls actually are, are those worth more than the potential chance of getting more legendaries and i would say honestly i really need legendary scrolls so i would definitely go ahead and summon typically on a normal 10x banner but today as i mentioned we are very close to pitying and therefore, I'm going to go ahead and use two Supreme Summons to go ahead and get my pity. And that's what I'm going to stop. So let's see what we get here. And then uh, let's go ahead and talk about the account a little bit. So there's the first one here. Really not sure what I'm looking for, uh, to be honest. But there's a Malasa here. Not bad, not bad. Let's go for one more. And this is going to be a legendary, hopefully. Honestly, I always hope for dupes. Um, but it's going to be a new one here. And we ended up getting... Ooh, we got Maeve. Interesting. So she's actually someone that I've been pretty you know interested in building potentially for the future um because she has one of the most unique abilities in the game in her passive here in the slumber marks the slumber marks going to reduce the target speed by five percent um and this is going to go ahead and basically blow up after a certain amount of time and what ends up happening is when you're able to go ahead and get that speed down this is one thing that can stack on other speed downs also stacking and applying to characters that normally can't be affected by speed down like guild boss um she also just does a lot of single target damage pretty solid character to be honest i don't know if i'm gonna build her um soon uh because that's what i want to talk about next is the progression of the um the account here and the uh overall kind of chinese new year effectiveness and, and what that's done for my account because everyone here has gone to pollen um, and honestly, this guy is kind of nuts. Um, we have increased defense, increased tenacity, um, and potentially damage immunity for himself. And then we have uh, a lot of other bonus things when we're talking about controlling effects. And then we have the removing attribute buffs. Um, and then we have increasing allies max HP cap, restoring HP. This guy's like a perfect character for... Um, perfect character for dragon tribe perfect character for force tower and guess what if i pop back over 
to the force tower. Uh, you know, you can see I'm actually missing that fifth slot. Missing that fifth slot. Dragon Tribe, I'm actually missing um, a fifth slot as well, basically, because I only have Reeves in here. So I'd love to pull Reeves out and then use these Triple HP burns, most likely, and then run in with Paul in for a little bit more tankiness. I think that'll be an amazing, amazing comp comparatively. So I'm pretty sure if I go for that, I'm going to get massive upgrades in both Tower and Faction Abyss. And I think, um, well, I was thinking about going for a blue character, right? So that I can go ahead and get some more, um, basically, some more value out of my blue tower to get my exclusive running. But I was thinking, okay, yes, I can go for the extra exclusive on Catherine, and that would be great, right? That would help me in Guild Boss, that would help me in Factions, and uh, that would help me basically anywhere that I use Catherine, which is everywhere. But um, I think, you know, getting Paul in up there might actually improve my forced mark tower enough that i can actually get exclusive three um catherine with it you know i only need as it shows here eight stars right i only need eight stars which means i need to do two more stages or get extra stars either so i need to do a floor 26 floor 27 and then i can go ahead and do floor 25 and then i can double back and maybe go ahead and do like floor 18 back here and get another star i think that's possible and uh paul Lynn is going to get way more value for me in the long run way way more value but, you know, summoning Maeve here opens the kind of door for a green mark comp because I was kind of stuck on, you know, what I was going to do for a green mark. I'm going to be honest, guys. I don't really have great, um, absolutely amazing green mark characters. Like I got Gustav and I have Taff. Taff isn't particularly great, especially not considering that, uh, you know, he's kind of a poisoner. I don't really have poisoners. Um, but if I build out Maeve here, then suddenly I have Maeve. Um, I'd have Space, I'd have Hizanya, and then I'd have Ben Austin, which is actually a pretty solid kind of four power combo. And then I'd love to build out another green mark so that I can get some more support in there um, in the future. Maybe someone like Sinov, you know, for the shielding and uh, the reduction of speed. I could also go with Kaido potentially, um, or I could just go with, you know, a shield room like Seal um, for the later stages and really commit to it because I will need a shield remover eventually, right? Um, uh, or I could even go something crazy and go with Lamb and try to just kill through the shield because Lamb's debuffs apply through the shield, um, which is pretty crazy because he's got a unique passive. So um, there's a lot of options here, but I wanted to just go ahead and go over the account, see where we're at. But guys, definitely summon for this summon banner, uh, especially if you're close to pity. I think this is a lot better than people might look at and see. Again, there could be better events in the future. I don't know. But if you're going to save your summons until whatever in the future is, that's your prerogative. I would recommend summoning on whatever best banner we have. That way you don't stall out on getting all those awakened materials. And this is arguably the best banner, along with the epic right up and the Hizanya 10X, right? Because Hizanya is so good um, that we've had. So we've had a lot of really good summon events. I'm sure most of you are out of summons between the epic right up and the Hizanya. So if you guys are close to pity and you're out of summons, maybe this is the time to kind of drop a couple summons like I did here for this video. But Hopefully that uh, that was interesting to you all. I uh, actually really, really think that the summit events are cool and I hope that they expand on it and make better ones. Like I hope we get a 2X event in the future or like a, another double legendary event. I guess that's another one that, that we haven't talked about. The double legendary event is the best event in my opinion for sure because you know it's basically 2X legendaries um, in terms of chances, but uh, this is probably the next step up. So until you wait for the next double legendary, which is usually around a unique holiday times, you're gonna wanna go for this event. Thanks for watching everyone, hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you all tomorrow.